Hello guys, my name is Tom and welcome to my new YouTube channel. So a lot of people will probably know that I run a FIFA YouTube channel already and go under the alias Capgun Tom. But today I'm starting up a brand new property and finance channel that's going to be documenting my journey through finance and through property investment. And today is a very exciting day because today is the day that I start my property portfolio. I've just completed on my first buy to let property and we're going to go and take a look at it together and show you how it kind of works financially. There are definitely mistakes I've made as this is my first attempt at doing this and uh, the mistakes are things that I have definitely noted down and I'm going to be learning from and I'll kind of talk you through them as the day goes on and wait, things that I'll be doing differently on the next property because I'm hoping to build up a large portfolio over the next two to three years and onwards into the future. Let's not put a limit on it. Let's just, you know, the sky is the limit. We'll go as high as we want. So if you do enjoy this video, please do drop a like on it. Also subscribing would be amazing and also turning on the notification bell so anytime I upload a video comes straight to your feed and uh, you don't have to look about for it. Let's go get out of this place where I live, which of course is London and go somewhere that isn't quite as expensive as London because yeah who can afford like gen like no this is like this is this is millionaire place I can't afford to buy in London we're gonna have to go somewhere with slightly less crazy prices now one of the things I've been told by multiple different people is that the property game is a people game so we're gonna have to try and make as many friends along the way so that they can help me out and potentially pass me deals on future houses and because we're about to go and pick up the keys from the estate agent on the property it's a good idea to go and get some brownie points so I'm gonna give them this bottle of wine as a kind of thank you for you know showing me around the property in the first place in the hope that they might find me some more in the future that would be epic let's go let's go let's go okay so that was a really long drive it took about two hours i think it might have even taken up to about two and a half hours of so much traffic but we're here we're in northampton and that is the city that my new house is in so very excited to go and get the keys from the estate agent so this is the first house in the property portfolio It's sort of like a test run to see how it goes and uh, yeah if i really enjoy it and i want to do more then there's the potential to buy more in northampton or maybe to go and try somewhere else okay we've got the keys we are now officially a property investor it's all done we are sorted this is pretty epic i'm actually more nervous now that i've got the keys than i was in the whole process of buying the property now i'm like now this is real this is could cause some problems but hopefully it's going to be a really nice easy journey for us and uh yeah, good money maker. First look at the house, it's this one right here. It's a three bed, one bath house and it is perfect for a first time family. Now I was actually planning to do like a little tour of the house but I actually did that on another video on my main channel so if you want to check that out I'll link it down in the description. To be honest this channel isn't really about looking around the house, it's more about the financials behind the house so I thought we'd just skip this part and head back to London now. Okay so welcome to my office where we're going to analyse the buy to let deal. Now I know some of the people who are watching this video will have come from my main channel and won't have any experience with buy to let or investment before. So I'm gonna keep this super simple so that you guys can follow it. And if you have any questions, you can ask me down in the comments section. Now the first number we need to get on the board is the purchase price. And this is how much I bought the house for. So the price I got this house for was 146,500 pounds, which I think is a pretty good deal because other houses on the street maybe were going for maybe 160 to 170,000 pounds. So we got a little bit cheaper than what the going rate is. Now the most common way to buy a house or a buy to let is to get a mortgage. Now a mortgage is a fancy name for a loan from the bank. So a mortgage is a loan from the bank who will charge you interest at a set rate that you've agreed with them. So they make their money by charging you interest and if you don't make your payments, they'll simply take the house away from you after an extended period of you not paying them back. Now buy to lets usually come in at a 75-25 split, so you'll need to have 25% of the property's purchase price to put down as a deposit and then the bank will loan you the other 75%. So 25% of 146,500 is 36,625. So that's money that I had to put in. The bank then gave me the remaining money, which was 109,875 pounds. So at the moment we're only looking at the startup costs. We'll be looking at all the running costs later on. I'm just showing you now all the money that I had to put up up front to purchase the property and be able to call it my own. So the other startup costs are stamp duty and fees. Stamp duty is just a tax that the government says 
I want some money when you buy that house, so they imply a tax on it, which is usually around about 4% for buy to let. And then other fees are like solicitor fees and checks on the property, a whole load of different stuff can come into this category. So stamp duty came to £4,825, other fees came to £1,442, and that puts me all in to buy the house at £42,892. Now, what you gotta remember is house prices vary throughout the country, so if you were thinking, oh my God, I'll never be able to get to 42,000, or maybe have more than 42,000 pounds, there are different areas of the country where you can buy that will either have higher or lower prices. Generally, the trend is the further north you go, the cheaper it gets, the closer to London you get, the more expensive it gets. So if this is something that you're thinking Thinking that might be a viable option for you down the line and you're thinking how will I ever get to that amount of money well potentially you could buy somewhere slightly further north now we get into the interesting stuff of how much money we're going to make because that's what we've done this for we're effectively buying this house to try and make money so it's all about making sure that we can make some money on it so firstly we need to know the expected rent how much money we're expecting to get as rental income from whoever's living there and that's going to be 800 pounds on this property from what I've heard from estate agents and uh, looking at rates in the local area. Now, of course, we're not gonna make the full 800 pounds each month because of course we have a whole load of running costs and a good way of remembering them is the three M's. So we've got the mortgage, we've got the management and we've got maintenance. Okay, so the big one is the mortgage. Each month that's gonna chop away the most amount of our profit and uh, I've got an interest only mortgage on this property. It's probably what most people do in this day and age and it just means that you're not actually paying back any of the loan you'll just literally have the same amount of loan throughout the entire time or the entire term of the loan um, my mortgage is around about 3.6 percent and working that out that comes to 330 pounds per calendar month the next one is going to be management i want to focus all my time on youtube i don't want to be thinking about this property so i'm going to be handing it off to a management company who will find a tenant take care of any problems they have you know collect rent all of those different things so i won't actually have to do anything with this property. If something big goes wrong, they'll give me a call. But other than that, we should be hunky-dory. Now, management fees do vary. Um, the amount that you usually vary between is about 13 and about 8%, depending on what package you're going with with the uh, management company. I'm gonna be going with pretty much fully managed and uh, my friend is going to be uh, charging me 10%. So that is going to be 80 pounds per month the last thing that we've got to sort of account for, but not necessarily is going to cost us money each month, is maintenance. Now maintenance includes anything that could go wrong on the property, so for example if the roof needs to be fixed, or they can also have stuff like bundled in with it, like for example, some time when there's no tenant. If a tenant moves out and you haven't got a tenant in there, this also is covered in maintenance. Now I've looked at some sort of like national averages um, of what maintenance can be, and they say about 1% of the property price per year and so I'm going to allocate £100 per month for maintenance. Okay, so you bundle all of these costs together and they come to £510 per month. So you subtract the 510 from £800, which is our expected rent, and you get £290 profit per month. So this is what we're expecting to make in profit per month, which will amount to about £3,480 per year. Some people will think this is a pretty bad deal because obviously I had to put in £42,000 to be able to make this £3,500 a year roughly um, and at that rate it's going to take me about 12 years to actually get my initial investment back but I see this as a long term thing. Not only are you going to see appreciation in the property so the property price going up and increasing and allowing you to refinance and bring some of your money back out which I think I'll cover in another video because because I think it'll be too confusing um, to sort of talk about in this video. You also see increasing rents year by year, so the rent will continually go up and will make more and more profit per year. And you have to remember this is totally hands-free for me. I don't have to do any work to be earning this amount per year because I'm going to be totally hands off and the whole thing is going to be managed for me. We can't really predict the future and try and guess how much the house will be worth in 10, 20 years time, but I can pretty much guarantee that it will be worth more than it is right now. As National Average would say, the prices of properties actually double every 10 years. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, especially with the current economic climate and how expensive housing is already, but I can definitely see some sort of increase coming. I'll be able to take some of my money back out. As I said, I'll be telling you about the refinancing 
in another video. Now, it is quite a steep learning curve doing this for the first time. I haven't done it perfectly, as a lot of you who may be watching this video who have done property before will probably point out. Um, but this was my first one, and this is a total learning experience for me. Um, originally, when I went around and looked, I was hoping that I would just be able to do a really light refurb that would cost me maybe two, three, four thousand pounds, something along those lines, where I just went around and painted the walls and did the carpets. That was what I was really hoping for and potentially have put a new bathroom in as well. Um, but when I had the mortgage company round, they said the electrical systems were dated and that I would need to do a pretty much full rewire on the property. And uh, unfortunately that means that we are going to go and have to strip the entire place back right to the studs, do the wiring. There is a cheaper way of doing it where they punch holes in the walls, but they said, or I was advised that it would be better just to get all of this done now and then completely forget about it because I was hoping that I would be able to do like a heavier refurb in maybe five to ten years time um, but that doesn't seem to be the case so it makes sense to get it all done now uh, the refurb is actually going to cost closer to £21,000 but of course because I am adding value to the property um, you go into a, a freshly redecorated house with all new um, pipes, boilers electrical systems, a nice garden, all of those sorts of things, people are gonna be willing to pay more and that's exactly what a mortgage company will do. As I said, I don't really wanna get into the refinance thing, but because I've managed to up the value of the property, I will be able to refinance the property and pull a whole load of money back out. Now, some people will be like, why don't you sell it? Well, realistically, I'm actually looking for something that's going to pay me long-term through the thick and thin. Who knows where YouTube will be in five to 10 years time. Right now it's going great, but, we just don't know. So this is gonna be like a safety net for me and it will be just something that pays me long into the future. Even though I encountered some problems along the way, I'm really happy with how everything turned out and I'm really excited to potentially get my teeth stuck into another property and uh, start building my portfolio. I think that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. If you do have any questions or you want me to make any follow-up videos, let me know down in the comment section. I'm more than happy to make more in-depth stuff, maybe about the refinance stuff that I was talking about um, because it's took me a long time to really grasp how that worked so I'm more than happy to make a video dedicated purely to that. Um, also let me know if you think this might be something that you'd be interested in getting into in the future. Um, I think it's definitely one of those things that um, is not very well talked about in the UK or maybe even across the world in education. I had no idea that this model of making money really existed. It wasn't until I sort of like started looking into it myself that um, I actually realized that this is a really good way of making long-term wealth and just and building passive income streams that you don't really have to work for. It's basically like you're making your own money work for you rather than working for money. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you smash a big thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you all next time. Peace.